Hey, how's it going everyone? Today I have a cooler that's not cooling. We're at 59 degrees. Let's do our general checks. Condenser's clean. Condenser fan's running. Compressor is running. Let's go check our EVAP coil really quickly. Fan 1, fan 2 are running. And last but not least, let's make sure our coil is not icing up. And we are good, clear of ice. So let's go ahead and gauge up and let's see what's going on. So it looks like we are running in a vacuum here. All right, so first thing we gotta do is figure out what our refrigeration pressure should be. So let's start with our suction pressure. So to calculate that, we take our desired box temp and we subtract our EVAP TD. So in this case, it's 20 Fahrenheit. So I'm looking for, let's just call it 34 Fahrenheit is my desired box temperature. I'm gonna subtract our EVAP TD and that's gonna give us 14 Fahrenheit. So if we take 14 Fahrenheit and we come to our PT chart here, 14 Fahrenheit equals actually 14 PSI. So I'm looking for 14 PSI here. All right, and to find our head pressure, we're just gonna simply take our ambient temperature and we're gonna add our condenser split. So in this case, our condenser split is 15 Fahrenheit. So our ambient is 71 Fahrenheit. We're gonna add 15. And that's going to give us 86 Fahrenheit saturation temperature. So let's pull up our PT chart one more time. 86 Fahrenheit is going to give us 97 PSI. All right, so let's head over to our refrigeration cycle chart. So we're looking for 14 PSI and 97 psi and as you can see we're in a vacuum so we're getting 28 inches mercury and then on our high side we were getting 87 psi so that means we're low on our suction we're low on our head pressure so that means we either have a restriction at our metering device in this case we have a cap tube or we are low on charge so let's go determine if we're low on charge or we have a restriction and how we're gonna do that is we're gonna add in the charge and let's see if our pressures change. All right, let's go to our data plate here so you can see our charge here is 10 ounces, R134A. So let's just start adding in a little bit of refrigerant and let's see what happens to our pressures. All right, high pressures dropped down to 69. And let's slowly throttle in some 134A. And you can see our pressure's up right now, but obviously our uh, the valve on the gauges are open. So that's why. So we're just gonna push in a couple ounces here and then we'll close off our gauge. And then let's see if the pressures drop or if they stay up. All right, so let's go ahead and close off uh, I put in the full charge there, so we're definitely going to be overcharged. But that's going to tell us right away if we're restricted or not. And you can see we're pulling right into a vacuum. And watch our condenser saturation was at 92 Fahrenheit. Watch it start dropping. Okay, we we're looking for around 97. Somewhere in and around there. And it's dropping back to the pressures we had earlier, which we had, uh, we're in a vacuum in 87 Fahrenheit condenser saturation so that means we have a restriction in the system all right so we have a restriction in the system so what does that mean it means that this cap tube here is most likely plugged or the filter dryer so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna sweat in a new filter dryer right here and I'm gonna leave one end capped off so that means this section right here of the cap tube is going to be open I'm going to push nitrogen from the compressor here, which is gonna flow it through this way. We're gonna come through our evaporator coil, and then we're gonna come out here of the cap tube that I'm gonna leave open, and our filter dryer is gonna be capped off, and we're gonna keep pushing nitrogen through until it comes out of this cap tube. All right, so we got our nitrogen bottle set up. And as you can see here, we're set up on that compressor port I was talking about. Here's the end of our cap tube. Okay, it's open. Okay, at the other end of the filter dryer. So the outlet of the filter dryer is closed. 
So we're going to keep pushing nitrogen through until we can hear it. So right now we got about 36 pounds of pressure. It's coming through, but it's barely coming through. All right, so let me just block the end here. And there we go. Now we got really good flow. All right, so whatever was plugged in there is blocked. So let's just keep pushing some nitrogen through. Okay, so we're still not out of the woods here because what we want to do is we want to test the pressure coming through at our operating pressures. So just because we have it flowing through at 83 PSI right now, doesn't mean that it's going to be flowing through when we're at our 14, 13, or 12 PSI. Okay, so I'm going to continue to blow it through. Let's get a little bit higher here, so we're up to 93, okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut off my nitrogen through the gauges, and I want to test right around 14 PSI, make sure we have good flow. So I've had good flow at 70, 80, 60 PSI, but when I get down to 14 or even 10, the flow is almost minimal. So that means you still have a restriction. So it's very important that, you know, we keep testing as we're going along. So you can see I'm putting my thumb over it to just kind of make, uh, it's almost like I'm surging the nitrogen through. And then right when we get down to our operating pressures, which will be somewhere around that 12, 13, 14 range, that's when I want to make sure that we have good flow. All right, we'll just fast forward this part really quickly. And let's get down to where we want to be. So 14 PSI, that's our operating pressures. And look at that. We have really good flow. It is really important that you do this step here. Because like I said, I've been caught where I'm good at 80 PSI. I didn't check this step. And then obviously we brace everything back together. We vacuum, we recharge. We're still in a vacuum. And there's like almost an hour that I've wasted. So I'm actually going to go even below the 14 PSI. I want to make sure I have flow all the way down through we're still having really good flow you can hear it. that's really good flow at these pressures so that tells me whatever was in here in this system uh, has been pushed out um, what got in the cap tube it's hard to say uh, sometimes when our condensers plugged uh, it'll make sludge in the system and then that'll that'll plug up the cap tube uh, could be from someone brazing without flowing with nitrogen um, there's all kinds of factors why this cap tube can get plugged, but if the system hasn't been opened up in a while, it's usually because the condenser was plugged and we just made sludge in the system and it got stuck in the cap tube. All right, so we're going to go ahead and braze in our cap tube back in our filter jar. Make sure you're flowing with nitrogen, especially on these little cap tubes. It is super important. Okay. And then pulling a good vacuum down to 500 microns. So we're all good there. Uh, let's start recharging the system and let's just make sure we're not restricted again. We're going to know right away because if we're pulling into a vacuum, the issue is there. So we're up to 72 Fahrenheit now. And let's just continue to charge here. Uh, we're going to weigh in our 10 ounces. And let's see if she pulls into a vacuum. All right, we'll just quickly hit fast forward here. We'll get the full charge 10 ounces in. All right, we got our full charge in. We're all good. Let's go ahead and close our valve off. And as you can see, we're down to 14 PSI, 104 head pressure, which is 90 condenser saturation. So that's giving us somewhere around an 18 uh, condenser split, which is good. We're looking for a 15. And we're at 61 box so let's wait patiently let's see if this thing's going to drop and actually we're up to 73 uh, ambient temperature so that would give us an 88 condenser saturation we're two degrees off there that's fine and we are at temperature 36 fahrenheit we're all good